Hi everybody, I'm making a hat and I'm starting with a slip stitch rib band. So look uh, how stretchy it is, uh, good looking and bounces, bounces back so well. Uh, to show you how to make a slip stitch rib band, I will be using a thicker yarn for better visibility. So I'm making a slip knot and I will make chain 10 foundation. And uh, the key for um, easy to work on a slip stitch uh, rib, uh, make your stitches loose or uh, use a bigger hook if you need to. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I made a chain ten foundation and we're making chain one which does not count as a stitch. And our first stitch we will be making in the second chain from the hook. So this is the first one we're skipping and this is the second one and we will be working in the back loop only. So I'm inserting my hook in the back loop and making slip stitch. Remember to work loosely. So two and I'm making slip stitch in the back loop of every chain of that chain 10 foundation. So we've made uh, 10 slip stitches. This is our first row. And again, at the beginning of next row, we're making chain one, which does not count as a stitch. Turning, and we will be making our first stitch again in the second stitch from the hook. Skipping this one. So in the back loop of next stitch, with which is first stitch of 10. Again in the back loop and you have to make uh, 10 slip stitches total. Every time in the back loop only. Keep your stitches loose or use a bigger crochet hook if you need to. If your stitches are too tight, it will be just impossible to uh, work on that stitch. It ca will cause too much frustration. Believe me, I've been there. So we've made two rows and again, chain one at the beginning of the row and uh, working first stitch in the back loop of second stitch uh, from the hook. So skipping this one and this one. This is the first stitch of 10. And repeat like that, making 10 slip stitches and chain one at the beginning of each row for required number of rows for the project you're making. So here I've made nine and I have to make the last one. And that last loop is kind of hiding. So at the beginning you might uh, turn your work and find that loop. So this one, the, the, the small loop here. And uh, when you get uh, used to that stitch, it becomes easy to find that loop. But remember first your stitches have to be loose finish your last row on the same side where your beginning tail is. So I've made a few rows here to know how many you need. Multiply the number of ribs you need by two and minus one row. So for example if you need 60 ribs uh, your number of rows would be 120 or 60 multiplied by two minus one 119 rows. If you lost count of your rows which happens uh, Place your rib band like that with the beginning tail on the upper right side and working in on the upper left side and count your ribs here on this side. So if you need 60, you should be able to count 60 with this one first and this one last. So <clears throat> to proceed, 
uh, we're going to uh, join that rib band in a loop by joining first and last rows together. And to do that, let's make chain one as we would normally make uh, to start next row. Turn the same way you would normally turn and then fold your rib band like that uh, with the beginning tail on the upper right side uh, here on the right side. With the loop and hook, insert your hook in the first stitch of the foundation. And then at the same time, in the back loop of the first stitch in which you would make your first slip stitch and make slip stitch through those three loops on your hook. Then insert hook in the next um, stitch of the foundation, in the back loop of the next stitch of the previous row, and another slip stitch. And repeat it for all stitches you have. I have 10, so I'm going to make 10 slip stitches like that, inserting hook every time in the next stitch of the foundation and in the back loop of the next stitch from previous row. And keep your stitches loose, do not like pull that loop a little bit up, but be consistent making them even. Or use a bigger hook. If consistent stitches are something you struggle, you struggle with. So this is my ninth stitch. And I have to make one more. And let's dig up that last loop. Here you go. So I finish, uh, finished joining. Let's take a look at the wrong side. Let's turn to the right side. That's how our seam looks. It's between those two ribs, not visible on the right side. Uh, now when you joined um, your slip stitch rib uh, in a loop, you are ready to proceed with your project. You would make stitches in the side of that rib band. So chain one and let's make single crochet in the same spot. Normally I make single crochet between each two ribs of the rib band. Sometimes you need increases. Uh, in that case you would make two single crochet in the same spot. So let's try. You have to find a spot where you will be making stitches, like maybe in this loop, but I found that it stretches too much. So I make my stitches in that spot here uh, on the right side uh, of the rib. It doesn't matter much where you make your stitches, the, but be consistent uh, making them in the same spot between every two ribs. Like don't make one here and another one here, just make them in the same spot. So your first row will look uh, neat and nice. Now, if you have to make increase, so just make two single crochet in the same spot. And then at the end, slip stitch in first single crochet. Uh, this stitch takes a little bit longer to make, but you will pay respect to your project by finishing them with slip stitch rib band, because not only it looks like a proper rib stitch, uh, it acts like one because bounces, um, stretches and bounces back so well. Some other crochet rib stitches look like rib stitches, but they're not uh, stretchy, as stretchy as this one. 